Hey everyone, uh, today I'm back to talk to you about how you can utilize lightweight styling within your UNO applications. Now, lightweight styling itself is a, something that's coming from Microsoft, from the Windows development uh, uh, using XAML. Um, and it is a way for you to override, in their case, system brushes uh, that you can pretty much override at the app or page level. Uh, and so this is all done through these theme resource and static resource uh, overriding. You redefine these static resource using the same key and you're able to provide it with different values. So your, um, your, your elements have a different look um, within the context that you've overridden those specific resources. So within UNO, uh, we go a little bit of a step further and within the UNO material library, we're actually implementing every single um, hard-coded value you could say. So any brush, any color, any font, any numeric value that we're using within any of the templates of the UNO material styles are defined as resources and are available to you uh, within the documentation for what those resource keys actually are, meaning all those resources are overridable using lightweight styling in order for you to, to skip the need to retemplate or create a new style if you want to customize something, whether that's uh, within the template or within the visual states themselves. So enough talking, uh, we could jump to a little sample app that I have now and get into some demos. And so you could see we have these two controls that we've overridden here. So we have our default uh, material button that we have here, and we have an overridden button that we have here. And you'll see that by default, um, it's green and it has a green border. And when I pointer over it and I hover, um, it becomes this red and it has a red border. And when I press it, you know, like it has this, this these different colors that that show up as opposed to the, to the default one. And so, We'll get into the XAML of what that looks like in a second, but these two are actually using the same exact style and there we're not overriding the foreground or the background of the direct property of the button. So the XAML for these two things is the exact same. The only thing that's changing are uh, the scope of the resources of which are being resolved to, to uh, show those colors. And the same thing for this uh, checkbox, right? So we have our default material checkbox and we have this overridden checkbox style that has this nice glyph uh, of a heart instead of a check. And you'll see that the background is changed. So when we're in check state, it's this, uh, this reddish instead of this purple. And you'll notice that as we hover over it and press it, it, it changes to these different colors. So we're messing with visual states and we're messing with the, the, the glyph data of, of everything that's happening within this checkbox. So if we look quickly at the code for this application, you'll see what I was talking about in terms of the XAML is actually the same for those two buttons, right? So this is our button for our default, but uh, sorry, this is our XAML for our default button. And this is our XAML for our overridden button. The only thing is, yes, we did put a border thing. It's just to, uh, just to amplify the color changes. Um, but we're not resetting the foreground. We're not resetting the background. We're not doing any of that. All the magic happens uh, within the resources of the button that we're uh, in our as our second button, right? So all here we're saying with these semantically named properties uh, for the filled button styles foreground, I want it to be dark green. For the filled button styles foreground when we're in pointer over state, I want it to be dark red. And so that's what we saw when I was hovering over. This is actually changing the values that are used within the visual state setters. And so if we were to go down to those checkboxes, uh, same idea, the XAML for these two checkboxes is the exact same. It's just that we're overriding certain resources within the context of that checkbox, right? So uh, once again, it's the semantically named, uh, the checkbox glyphs foreground when it's in check state, the checkbox glyphs foreground when it's in checked and pointer over state. So we have multiple states there that are, that are being uh, utilized. And then that really cool heart that we had was just basically overriding the check glyphs path data. Right, so we have uh, other things other than brushes that are defined that are uh, defined as these overridable static resources or theme resources, and so that is how basically you can utilize lightweight styling within your application uh, to get any customizations you want without having to retemplate, without having to restyle. So something that's very very powerful. Uh, and there's a lot of documentation uh, available to you on the website, uh, as well as, a, like I mentioned, a list of per control each resource key that's available for you to override. Um, so go check it out, go play around with it, build something cool, let us know what you do with it, and I uh, hope you learned something, and I'll catch you in the next one.